Hey guys, so today I am doing an Ice Queen portrait tutorial. So uh, let's get started. I have this portrait. Um, and first I am going to duplicate the base layer twice and I will start doing frequency separation. So frequency separation takes the texture and the color and separates them in the image. That way you can work on um, each layer separately to get the desired look um, on skin. So right now I'm using the lasso tool um, to smooth out the color variations within the skin. Um, it just makes everything flow together a lot smoother. Um, so say there's discoloration or patchier spots where uh, the skin doesn't blend well, this will take care of most of that. And I always repeat the same thing that I do on the face on the rest of the skin that's showing. So it, in this photo, I will do that on the shoulders and possibly the hands, yes, and the hands and the wrist. That way um, the whole image is very consistent. The skin, the face skin matches the skin on her arms. That way it all looks cohesive because if the face is really perfect and then the rest of the body isn't, it, it doesn't carry out that ideal fantasy look that we're going for. Now I'm switching over to the other layer of frequency separation where I am working with the texture. So right now I'm getting rid of all of the unwanted texture within the skin. So I'm trying to keep all of that good skin texture and just get rid of the unwanted texture. And it's very difficult with this makeup uh, in particular just because of all of the glitter that's on there. There's so many different types and they're all different textures. It really adds a lot to the skin that you have to kind of sift through like what is glitter what isn't glitter? What do I want to keep? What, I, what do I not want to keep? And frequency separation can definitely go way too far if you're not careful. Um, but it, it's really up to you how far you want to take it. it. It's very versatile if you just want to do very minor changes or if you want to go full on it's, it's completely up to you how you do that, which I think is a really awesome, it's a really awesome thing. So I'm just getting last bit of texture, unwanted texture that is on her forehead. And I say unwanted texture, but her skin was very, very nice. Um, but with all of the makeup and the different glitters, you know, sometimes there are things that we don't want showing up in the picture. That doesn't mean that her skin looked bad at all. Um, so now I'm just going back over the rest of her skin and doing the same thing, getting rid of any unwanted texture that's in there. Okay, so now I'm jumping in to um, dodging and burning. So I took a curves adjustment layer and brought it up so everything is really bright and then I invert the layer mask. 
taking a soft brush tool in white I go over the layer mask in all of the places that I want to be lighter so I'm using this as my dodging tool so I did the forehead the bridge of the nose the cheekbones anywhere that I want more highlight adding a little bit more highlight to her lip which can make the lips look a little bit more full and it's always a good idea to zoom in and out to, to zoom out after a bit of retouching that way you make sure you don't go too far when you're zoomed in so close it's easy to go overboard without realizing how much you're doing um, and then I did the same thing on her arms and her hands and her fingers and her chest I want it all to have that same glowy feeling so now I just took another curves adjustment layer but this time darkened the whole photo and then inverted the layer mask taking the same brush but now I'm applying shadows so this is how I would do my burning in the dodging and burning. Okay, so now I just have a plain layer, an empty layer, and I'm taking a brush tool in black and I'm filling in those eyelashes because there was a bit of a gap uh, so I did black to make it look like her eyelashes and then I took a white brush and I added some white strokes to make the paint blend in more of those white eyelashes. Um, I am using the free transform and just adjusting that a little bit so it wasn't too close to the eye uh, because the eyelashes wouldn't be in her eye so you want it to I shifted it up a little bit so it looks more natural more believable okay so I added a little bit of blue with the brush tool to add a little bit of under eye makeup and now on another layer I am doing little white eyelashes and then darkening the base of the lashes to make them look more real, more realistic. Brightening up the waterline with a white brush. And then I'm going to go in and repeat it all on the other side. Okay, so now I'm blending out the white and those eyelashes on the other side. I am taking a soft white brush and I am painting some white on the eyes and I changed the blending mode to overlay to give that really glowy dreamy feel to the eyes 
and I am removing all the distractions in the background that were on the wall behind her. Getting all those cleaned up. And now I'm going to start doing the color adjustments. And this is where you can really play around and decide what you want your image to look like. So I'm just go starting from the top. So I start with the reds and the yellows, greens, cyans, blues. So I'm doing all of that and just playing around with the sliders, going back and forth to see what colors I like where, how I want each color to look within the image. Now I'm doing a separate selective color layer with only that portion of the hair and um, the skin that is affected by the backlight. Um, because I have a gel in that light, it was a uh, blue, bluish colored, more of like a light blue gel. Um, and since she has red hair, when the blue mixes with the red, we're getting a more of a greenish color so what I'm doing is just taking that a bit further with the selective color without it affecting the rest of her hair or her skin um, I just made it a little bit more blue I don't want any of that green yellow color coming through So once I'm done with that, I started layering gradient maps. So I start with my gradient maps on the blending mode normal, and I just start stacking them and changing the opacity. And this is where you can really add your own style to your image. And now I've switched my blending mode to overlay, so now I'm stacking uh, gradients that are all in the blending mode overlay on top of each other. And once I'm done with that, I will start adding uh, gradient maps that are in the blending mode multiply. which darkens the image a bit. So now I grouped them all together and I, to I toggled them on and off. And I'm going back over the top of the gradients with a selective color. So now that the gradients have changed those colors a bit, I wanna go back in and play with them just a little bit with that selective color. Okay, so I'm just combining all of the different layers and labeling them. That way I don't get confused and I can keep track of everything if I want to go back and change anything. So now I'm going back and fixing that little bright spot on the eyelash. It was just so much brighter than all the others and it didn't really blend in well. So I went over it with a brush tool and then uh, changed the opacity till it looked like it blended in. And I'm just taking a few more layers, cleaning up the skin where it needs it. And 
and just adding a tiny bit more highlight to the cheekbones. Okay, so now it's done and this is what we started with straight out of camera and then this is the finished image. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any questions please leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe. Thank you!